Hello guys, Perry back with another Sundance interview in the Collider studio. Thanks to the Kia Telluride, a huge thanks to them for making this happen because it means we can be here with this great ensemble and a very talented director to talk about the movie, Loose. So Julius, I want to start with you here because I know you've been working on this for quite some time and I know the idea was developed a while back. So what is it like bringing this movie to audiences today after working on it for so long? Uh, it's really gratifying, first of all. It's amazing to be able to have such a talented and passionate uh, group of actors to work with and you know the questions and the ideas that the film is exploring um, are ones that you know have always kind of been a part of American culture and I think right now we're in a pretty divisive moment um, so they're even much more pressing of questions and uh, the kind of conversation it's trying to stimulate um, are things that I think are, are necessary and important. Can you give a little breakdown of the story for our viewers out there who do not know what this movie is about yet? Absolutely. It's about um, an upper middle class white couple played by Tim Roth and Naomi Watts who had Adopt a young man from uh, Eritrea, played by Calvin Harrison Jr., who is a former child soldier. And this kid um, becomes a real icon and a real symbol in his community of success. But when he has a teacher, played by Octavia Spencer, who um, assigns a paper, he writes one that advocates political violence, basically saying it's okay to do some pretty gnarly things. And it you know, affects his relationship with the teacher, with his parents, and kind of has a huge impact on his uh, immediate community. Calvin, can you tell me a little bit about the conversations you two had when you first signed on, were there every any, were there any specific questions you had for Julius that you really needed answers? I had all the specific <laughs> questions for Julius. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess I just there's a lot of things that um, Luz does in the film that I, I, I just had I was wondering why because I'm I'm just not a I'm not a fighter per se. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but I, I always tell people if I were to drown, I'll probably just float and just close my eyes and rest. But Luz <laughs> is not that guy. <laughs> He's gonna swim. Um, and so I think I just was like, why is he fighting so hard for this? And he kind of he kind of basically told me, I told him some stories about my high school experience and growing up and, and the, some of the racial race issues I faced. And he was like, they, they're very similar and it's not that far from you. So it was just trying to, to humanize this 17 year old boy who is a human being that I just for some reason put in a box to, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I was wondering if there's any difference in terms of the different generations represented in the movie, specifically for the adults and then these teenagers. So can you two speak a little bit to, uh, to that point? Well, I think we grew up in a generation where our parents set the tone and said, this is who you're going to be. This is the path that we want you to go on. And we kind of just accepted that. We're in now um, in a new time where the kids are saying, you know what? No, we, we, we are actually smart people. We can trust ourselves. We can shape our identities and we don't need you interfering. And I think this is what this film is about. It happens with both um, Luce, Calvin, and and Stephanie's character. Uh, um, Stephanie, sorry, <laughs> I'm like, not you. Um, and um, they're pushing back and saying, "We are in charge of our identity, and please don't put your agenda on on to us." Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your character? Oh, do you, do no, you no, no. feel free? <laughs> yeah, it's just messy. I love the challenge of having so many people, and I want to get everybody a little bit of time here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your character's relationship to Luce and how your experience throughout the movie differs from his? Um, yeah, I play, I guess, I don't want to give away too much, but I play Luce's classmate. And I actually feel like my character, Stephanie, is quite similar to Luce um, out of all the characters, um, which is uh, Stephanie kind of has the ability to shed a different light on Luce's character, which uh, is super important to the movie. And uh, Marsha, where do you step in here? Huh. <laughs> um, I, I play um, Octavia's sister. Um, Harriet's sister, Rosemary, and I think uh, I'm there to sort of throw a little monkey wrench into her somewhat very steady life that she's established for herself. And so between Luce and I, I think we kind of um, just mess her up a little bit. <laughs> can, can you talk a little bit about working with Octavia? Because she is one of the people in this industry that I admire greatly. And I love seeing all the different projects she chooses because she chooses them with such value and purpose. So I just have great respect for her. I, I mean, she's one of my heroes, obviously. And I was really happy the first day we worked together. She, um, We were in the car and they had mentioned something technical that I 
I didn't know what it was, but it, you know, as a new person on set, you don't want to ask. You don't want to seem like you don't know. And I remember her turning to me and being like, "What the fuck is that? Ooh, can I <laughs> can I curse? I'm sorry." But she was, but she was so dis. She was like, "I have no idea what this thing is." They keep mentioning it, and I was like, "Oh my god, me too!" And so I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim is the only one who hasn't answered a question here. I'm going to give this one to you. Um, oh, I like it that the movie way. taps into the feeling of being an outsider, and I find that anybody who feels that way out there can only benefit from hearing somebody else's experience if they've gone through something like that. So have you ever been able to kind of connect to what some of the characters in this movie are experiencing and how did you pull yourself out of it? Um, only in the, I kind of came from England to here. That's, I think that's about all I've got on that front and also doing a fake job, right? Um, so there's that, there's that, there's that element. But no, we, we we've talked about it. We've talked. It's that what what we are. Our characters are in, are in, are in feel that they're in a comfortable, in the com in the comfort zone. That they have they have uh, they are quite liberal and they're very uh, engaged and they think they feel that they're doing the right thing. They don't see any any racism within themselves, and that's what um, we found to be interesting for us to examine. And, and I pose uh, the outsider question now yeah. to the group, because again, I think it's an important conversation to have. So is there any feeling of being able to relate to any of these characters in any capacity? And maybe if you haven't too, just being steeped in this story for the shooting period, sometimes you can realize new truths about yourselves or about somebody else that you might not have been able to process before. I think everyone feels like an outsider, and anyone who doesn't is an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would it'd be weird. Like we all feel like, oh my God, I wish, I wish I um, people understood. I wish I wasn't the only crazy one, or I wish I wasn't the only shy one, or the only. I think everyone can relate to that on some level, right? Absolutely. Otherwise, they're fakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Um, I was wondering a little bit about the process for you of going from something like Cloverfield Paradox, which is a completely different type of movie here that a lot of our viewers are very well aware of, to doing something like this. Just the importance of being able to do a big, crazy action movie like that, but then also having something like this that really says something and can make a big difference in someone's life? Uh, well, the, this is actually where I started. I mean, um, I studied theater for my first degree and I went to film school and these are the kind of projects I made. Cloverfield was an interesting opportunity that came my way. And uh, uh, But this is kind of uh, my heart and soul and, and what I'm truly, truly uh, uh, passionate about. So um, uh, I'm grateful to have opportunities um, to do some of the larger things, but I think things like these are so necessary and important. And again, just getting a chance to work with all these actors, its uh, this is a dream come true for me. Um, so uh, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Is this anybody's first Sundance? Just one. <laughs> did, it, did anyone here give you any tips or tricks for getting around Sundance 2019? Because this is my first also, and I can tell you that when I got off the plane, exactly. I, wow. thankfully yeah. I'm surrounded by wonderful people at Collider who made sure I didn't get altitude sickness, so I'm still standing. Exactly. We've all, we've done it before and we got altitude sickness. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Um, no, I mean, I didn't really tell anyone that I was coming so early, <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't give them the opportunity to give me any advice. Um, but it's being here has been amazing. I mean, this festival is just so welcoming and so loving. Um, it's definitely not going to be my last one. Yeah. yeah. I like hearing that. Um, so as a first timer and coming back in the future, what tip would you give somebody else who wants to have a great Sundance experience? I mean, book everything super early. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the process, and so I just kind of came here willy-nilly. Um, but even just I've met a lot of strangers who have welcomed me into their group and just brought me along to different things. Um, yeah, so book things early. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone get the opportunity to hang out and see and celebrate other movies in addition to, I mean, in some cases here, the multiple movies you're working on right now? Nothing? Yeah. Nothing. I'm, I'm going to watch movies. I have a little bit more time in the back end of the festival, so there's things I want to watch. What's on the must-see list? Uh, Wolf Hour. Of course. <laughs> very, a very, very smart choice right there. Yeah. 
Um, Kelvin, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the trajectory of your career, because I remember one of the first times I saw you on screen was at a film festival where It Comes at Night premieres, and obviously you really caught my eye on that. So what has the journey been like for you? This is a little bit of a whirlwind of a festival with some great performances, in, again, in multiple movies. So how are you feeling right now, and what are you looking forward to in the future? I'm always shocked. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, how did I get here with these guys? And I'm just, I don't know, it's just been exciting. It's been fast, and I've just been trying to do as much as possible and do things that are interesting to me. And I'm enjoying the process. I like hearing that. hanging out with Tim and Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> Special place to be, a great team to be working with. So thank you guys so much for your time today. Thank you guys for watching this. Please like and share this video and tell people you know about Loose. Another thank you to our good friends at Kia Telluride for making this happen. See you soon with more Sundance interviews.